I'm Richard Kaplan, and I'm proud to be the mayor of the city of Lauderhill since 1998 and as an elected official of the city since 1988. The city commission and I are proud to present a history of the city, a vibrant place that has been shaped by innovation and collaboration in presenting a vision of the city. I'm Commissioner Ken Thurston. Lottie Hill was established in 1959 in Broward County at the edge of the Everglades in its dairy farm country. In 1959, Florida was poised for change. Fidel Castro had just entered Havana, sparking thousands of Cubans to emigrate. And NASA's space program, based in Florida's Cape Canaveral, was racing to compete with the Soviet space program, which had launched the first satellite called Sputnik in 1957. New York-based developer Herbert Sadkin recognized the huge potential for growth in Lauder Hill. Sadkin was already known for designing and building the typical American house, which drew international attention as the focal point of the American National Exhibition in the Soviet Union in 1959. At the exhibition, Vice President Richard Nixon and Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev held the kitchen debate, sparring over whether this model home, with all its modern conveniences, was truly affordable for the average American. Herbert Sadkin brought that prefabricated modern ranch-style house design to Lauder Hill. The first homes, located near what are now the Sadkin Center and Wolk Park, sold for $12,000. Financing was advertised at $30 down and $30 a month. By 1966, hundreds of homes had been built. Herbert Sadkin had originally planned to name this new Florida community Sunnydale. But his friend William Sapphire, the New York Times journalist, thought it sounded too much like a neighborhood in Brooklyn. Sapphire instead focused on the wordplay of hill and dale. Sadkin pointed out that the city has no hills, but Sapphire replied that there are no dales in Lauderdale either. The name Lauder Hill was born. To meet the increased demand for dairy products in South Florida, MacArthur Dairy relocated its processing operation to Lauder Hill. Founded by James Neville MacArthur in 1929, the farm had grown from 20 Jersey cows to more than 10,000 head. With the move, MacArthur Dairy would be well situated to serve the area's booming population. Throughout the 60s, Lauder Hill attracted entrepreneurs and innovative commercial ventures. Developers built the Southeast's first enclosed air-conditioned mall in 1966. Located on 46 acres on State Road 7, the Lauder Hill Mall's anchor stores included McCrory's, Lowe's Theater, Woolco, J.B. Hunter, and Food Fair. Lauder Hill owes its innovative and forward-thinking atmosphere to its founders. The first city officers, Harold Walk, David Shapiro, Nathan Ringler, Jerome Walk, and Herbert Sadkin were appointed by Governor Leroy Collins. The city's first general election was held in 1965. Howard Illinger became the first elected mayor. Hello, I'm Commissioner M. Margaret Bates. In the 1970s when I moved to the city of Lauderdale, this community was evolving into a popular winter home for retirees. New neighborhoods, including the Inverary Resort, attracted snowbirds and celebrities from throughout the country. Inverary's lush tropical landscaping, as well as its waterfalls and recreation facilities, exemplified the quality of life residents were seeking. Lauder Hill's reputation as a premier winter resort community was confirmed when entertainer Jackie Gleason made the Inverary development his home. A renowned showman, comedian, and actor, Jackie Gleason became an American icon in the role of bus driver Ralph Cramden in the television series The Honeymooners. The show debuted in 1955 and ran until 1970. During its heyday, Gleason moved the Honeymooner show, which was taped live, to Miami Beach. 
An avid golfer, Gleason built a home near the courses at Inverary Country Club in 1972, which were designed by legendary golf course architect Robert Trent Jones Sr. That same year, he founded the Jackie Gleason Inverary Golf Classic. Some of the game's most famous professional golfers won the tournament, including Lee Trevino, Johnny Miller, and Jack Nicklaus. I'm Hayward Benson, Commissioner of the City of Lauderhill. In the 1980s, our city experienced phenomenal growth. We expanded our municipal services to provide for our growing senior population. We elected our first African-American commissioner, as well as our first female mayor. In 1982, the city's voters made history by electing Hayward J. Benson Jr. as the first African-American city commission member. The Broward County educator, a resident of Lauder Hill since 1971, had built an extensive resume of community service and won with a broad base of support. To address more of the needs of its citizens, the city built its first senior center in 1981. The Sadkin Center, which is a bustling community center today, offers art and exercise classes, legal counseling, and social activities. At the same time, the annual Inverary Golf Classic reaffirmed its position as one of the top tournaments in the nation. NBC took over from CBS to provide national televised coverage. The Classic also replaced sponsor American Motors with a new sponsor, Honda Motors, which contributed $400,000 to the tournament purse. The city also mourned the sudden loss of community leaders. Community activist Ron DeHart succumbed to a heart attack at age 37. The father of three children, DeHart was known for his civic involvement and support for youth sports and scholarships and longtime council member Ben Dansker, who served five terms in office, died in 1989. By the 80s, the city had outgrown its first city hall, which had been converted from a small real estate sales office. The new city hall, designed by architect Michael Schiff and built for $3 million, was located at Mission Lake Park. It opened in 1983. Achieving another milestone in 1988, Lauder Hill voters elected Eileen Lieberman to serve as the first woman mayor. You know, it was very interesting being a working mother, raising three children and running to be the mayor of the city, which at that point was an elected chief administrative officer. It was a full-time plus position. I mean, I would come in on Saturdays. I'd ride my bike to City Hall and come in. But I remember going to the Board of Realtors, and one of them actually said to me, did I think it was all right for me to have a full-time job when I had children? And I said to them, my oldest is 16. If you can convince him to stay home with me, I'll stay home with him. And they all laughed, and I got their endorsement. And then shortly thereafter, we were at a candidate's night at Las Vistas, and they were going alphabetically. So the then mayor, Dave Kaminsky, got to speak before me. And he actually said he thought a woman's place was in the home. And I got up to speak next, and I said, there isn't a lot that he and I agree on. And that was true. I was more about families and programs for both you know, our seniors, our children, make sure that we had facilities. And I said, but I agree with him, a woman's place is in the House, the Senate, the County Commission, the Mayor's Office. Everyone started laughing, and by the next morning, that story was all over the city and the race was over. After eight years as mayor, Lieberman went on to serve on the Broward County Commission for 16 years. I'm Commissioner Howard Berger. The 1990s saw a significant change in the city of Lauder Hill. In 1996, we established our own police department, no longer utilizing the Broward Sheriff's Office. Also, we changed our form of government we established a city manager form of government from a strong mayor form of government. It was in 1996 that the city commission endorsed the reconfiguration of the city's administration, and Lauder Hill residents voted to move on from 27 years of the strong mayor form of government. With then Mayor Eileen Lieberman leaving to serve on the Broward County Commission, the city hired James L. Pennington to serve as the first city manager. In Lauderhill, residents took action to improve the local environment. 
The first of the new policies was implementing curbside recycling. A coalition of Broward cities including Lauder Hill, Tamarack, North Lauderdale, Margate, and Coconut Creek join forces to increase awareness about recycling and to reduce the level of waste destined for the county's landfill. The conservation movement inspired residents to become more involved in their neighborhoods. The city commission, sensing a renewed commitment to community involvement and engagement, moved to re-establish the municipal Lauder Hill Police Department. The new police chief, Mike Scott, was tasked with hiring police officers whose diversity reflected that of the community. And Scott promised to take a problem-oriented, proactive approach to crime prevention and law enforcement. Civic leaders from Lauder Hill made headlines in state politics as well. City Commissioner Matthew Meadows, an educator in the Broward County Schools, was elected to the Florida Senate in 1992 and served there until 1998. He was elected to the Florida House in 2000. Leading a regional trend, Lauder Hill's population continued to grow and to become more diverse. By 1991, the city's population topped 50,000, with nearly 50% of the city's residents of African American or West Indian descent. To celebrate the community's growing diversity, Lauder Hill children celebrated their first Unity Day in 1993. The entire city joined the celebration with the launch of UnitaFest in 1997. Sponsored by the Caribbean National Cultural Association and the Lauder Hill Mall, this two-day festival features West Indian music and food, dance, and a carnival-style parade of costumes. It draws more than 20,000 people. City residents also welcomed the opening of the Lauder Hill Sports Park on Oakland Park Boulevard. The $3.3 million facility is home to a hockey rink, soccer field, baseball field, and a football facility which hosts numerous local football leagues for people of all ages. Over its first 40 years, Lauder Hill grew into a thriving city of 58,000 residents, gradually evolving from a seasonal retirement resort to a younger, more diverse year-round community of working families. The medium age was now 35. Lauder Hill celebrated the millennium with the first annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. The mission of this annual event, founded by Commissioner M. Margaret Bates, is to educate youth about the civil rights movement and Dr. King's critical legacy of advocating for equal rights and opportunities for all. The event challenges students to a civil rights spelling bee and raises money for college-bound students through the MLK Scholarship Fund. Honored guests have included Ruby D and Ozzie Davis, James Earl Jones, Spike Lee, Harry Belafonte, and Susan Taylor. In 2001, Lauder Hill honored two outstanding community leaders, Charles Bingham and Leroy Bates, by naming streets for them. In addition to his 30-year career as educator, Leroy Bates was a coach and community activist, serving as president of the United Lauder Hill Homeowners Association. Charles Bingham had a successful 31-year career with the Broward County Sheriff's Office and coached the champion Lauder Hill Cubs, helping to mentor the next generation of community leaders. Also in 2001, Lauder Hill's longtime fire chief and assistant city manager Charles Ferranda was selected as the city's second city manager. An amateur astronomer, Ferranda known as Chuck, started with the city as a firefighter in 1976. In 2004, residents voiced their support for open space and more parks. They voted for the $35 million Great Neighborhoods Bond, which would fund park improvements, city beautification, redevelopment, and cultural projects. As a result, residents are now able to enjoy a quiet walk, well-maintained sports fields, and arts and leisure activities throughout the city. In 2004, Lauder Hill citizens elected the first Jamaican-American commissioner. Dale V. C. Holness worked to promote economic development and international trade and established the Sister Cities program. He went on to serve as a Broward County Commissioner. In 2005, Lauder Hill was named an All-America City by the National Civic League. 
Selected cities from across the nation are honored for community-based problem solving, grassroots civic engagement, and public-private partnerships. The city's delegation was recognized for addressing housing issues and for exemplary work in youth services and revitalizing neighborhoods. Lauder Hill also added two neighborhoods during that period. Responding to Broward County's call for all unincorporated areas to be annexed by existing municipalities, the West Kenlark and St. George communities both voted to be annexed by Lauder Hill. That same year, Lauder Hill was dealt a devastating blow. Surprisingly late in the season, Hurricane Wilma roared through South Florida, destroying the 22-year-old City Hall. It took nearly four years to regroup, but municipal workers were able to move into the beautiful new City Hall in June of 2009, just in time to mark Lauder Hill's 50th anniversary. Businesses and developers have also contributed to the city's new vitality. A number of new residential projects took advantage of the city's location on public transportation routes, including the new Georgetown neighborhood, adjacent to the county's Central Broward Regional Park. The entrance to the regional park is marked by its iconic clock tower. This 110-acre park Built in partnership with the City of Waterhill and Broward County features a state-of-the-art field house. The 5,000-seat stadium has a multi-purpose field for football, soccer, cricket matches, and it's the only facility in the United States certified by the International Cricket Council. The Great Neighborhoods Bond continues to help fund the construction of important city projects. The Lauder Hill Aquatic Center, which was completed in 2012, provides children and youth with an excellent facility for water safety classes and water sports. The center has a 25-meter pool and a Funbrella splash feature for children. Residents of all ages can expand their horizons with free educational classes and special events at the Lauder Hill Town Center Library. The city's rich history has been collected and documented by the Lauder Hill Historic Preservation Committee. The collection is spotlighted at the Lauder Hill Cultural Museum located at the Wally Elfers Park. This beautiful LEED certified facility stands on the site of Lauder Hill's first city hall. The park is named for Walter Elfers, who was a dedicated youth sports coach and served as a commissioner for 12 years. The Lauder Hill Performing Arts Center and Library is a new state-of-the-art facility which incorporates a 1,200-seat theater, as well as a spacious lobby for events and performances. The center is also home to a full community library. For a diverse community, Lauder Hill's vision is surprisingly clear. The community's residents speak 43 languages, yet all agree on what makes a great hometown a prosperous, safe, and friendly city where people of all ages and backgrounds can enjoy a great quality of life.